In 2020, I read 35 books and listened to two audiobooks. Now, I read a bit of everything, from fiction, to non-fiction, to more non-fiction, to more fiction, to a bit in English, a bit in Spanish, a bit for school, a bit for pleasure, a bit of economics, etc. It was a busy year. I mean, not really. I didn't have a lot of things to do. That's why I could afford to just read a bit of everything, honestly. Um, of course, these aren't all the books I've read this year. Um, I have a few of them here on my Kindle. So um, let's dive into what I read and what I, what I learned from each of these books. Since it's a lot of books, I'm not going to be going into details about the plot or, or what they're, they're about. I'm just going to give a quick opinion and uh, a rating. Stick around, guys, and uh, this will be fun. So I have, I have this uh, book of books list, so to speak, and it's a log of all the books I've read this year and all the books I've ever read in my life, roughly, and I've started it over this gap year. And um, so I can tell you that I read this book first, and this is Atonement by Ian McEwan. And I love this book. It's a great book. It's a fantastic book. It's one of those books you have to read a couple of times and then discuss with somebody to really absorb it and to really just get it. Great book. I won't spoil it. Read it till the end. Read it again. Great book. So the second book I read is Too Loud a Solitude by Bohumil Hrabal. It's, he's Czech and it's translated from Czech. So um, it's a, again a great book, um, really simple English, really understandable, not really long, but again, a really nice book I wouldn't have picked up if it hadn't been uh, recommended to me. So don't be afraid to just explore books and just read things because you can. So third and fourth books were actually a series. They were the Handmaid's Tale series, saga. And um, it, again, they're a good book. It's made up of The Handmaid's Tale and The Testaments, both by Margaret Atwood. And they're good books, I really enjoy them. I hadn't read them before, which was uh, interesting because they're a classic. And I um, really recommend, although the first one, 10 times better than the second one. It's one of those cases of you should have just kept with the first one because it was great. And the second one is still good, but not as good, you know? So next up we have a series, uh, my favorite series actually. It's five books right now, the sixth sixth book is still being written. It's Red Rising by Pierce Brown. I actually reread these books because the author Pierce Brown released his fifth book this year. So I read them again, one through four, to just to read the fifth one. And it's, it's a great series, I love it. Um, I, I don't have to even show you the rating here. 10 out of 10, 20 out of 20, my favorite saga. It has everything and it starts as a young adult and the fourth and fifth and hopefully the sixth aren't as young adult e or juvenile so again great book for everybody a bit gory read them seriously great books the next book i was uh, i discovered via netflix actually and uh it's a series six books i didn't read the seventh or eighth because I, it was just i didn't want to um, it's, and, and I'm sure a few of you have watched this series, it's a great series, really cute, really wholesome. It's Anne of Green Gables uh, by L. M. Montgomery, and I was actually surprised by how much the series diverged from the actual um, books. But again, they're both great, really wholesome. I'm really glad I watched the series first because it really gave me a clear picture of how Anne behaved in the books. It's, uh, since it's more visual, it was easy for me to imagine her behavior in the books. And you see her grow up and she has kids and everything. Again, really wholesome. If you want a distraction or just to like tune off from social media or the news or anything like that, would recommend again, 10 out of 10. Great books. The next book I read was less wholesome than Anne of Green Gables. It was Nothing to Envy by Barbara Demick and it's about the people that live in North Korea and their lives. And this was a gift, and I usually don't read books that are gifted to me, but this was given to me by a dear friend, and I read it, and it was great. I, I didn't expect to enjoy it, but it's, it's really good. It's written differently from what I hoped. It's like a story weaved with people's accounts. Really insightful. I had no idea 
about anything going inside North Korea, as I think many of us do. It has um, a few pictures, it has a lot of detailed descriptions, detailed information. Again, a great book, read it. I'm looking forward to eating her new book, which is Eat the Buddha. Uh, it's about Tibet. So uh, yeah, great book. So the next book I read was again, uh, fiction. La Sombra del Viento by Carlos Ruiz Afon. And there's actually four books. I read three of them. They're La Sombra del Viento, El Juego del Ángel, and El Prisionero del Cielo. And they form the series of um, El Cementerio de los Libros Olvidados, which means the Cemetery of Forgotten Books. And again, great book, really good escape book, really immersive, even though it is quite long. Um, I really enjoyed it. It was the only book I read in Spanish this year, I'm ashamed to admit, but it's, uh, and I didn't even think I, would, I was gonna like it, but I did end up liking it so much I read the other two. I haven't read the, 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 the last one he, he released, but it's a great book, really would recommend in Spanish if you speak Spanish, if not learn it, I'm kidding. Um, if you don't speak Spanish, um, just got a translation. It's a good book, um, yeah. Not 10 out of 10 though, but uh, yeah, great book. Read it if you can. So the next book I read was by Haruki Murakami, and I have heard a few things about him. I'm a fan of his non-fictions, like what I talk about when I talk about running or underground, um, which are both great books. So I, I was given this book, um, Haruki Murakami's The Wind-Up Bird Chronicle, and this was my second attempt at reading it, because first of all, the letters are, like, the words are super tiny. So it took me a long while to read. But this was my sec second attempt because it's so bizarre. I had actually started reading it and had given up. It's super weird, super bizarre, makes no sense, it's easy to get lost. Um, honestly, I really enjoyed this book the second time. I'm glad we didn't read it for school because that was the intention. And uh, I would not recommend, it's a great book and he writes beautifully, but I just wouldn't recommend it because it's something you have to pick and you have to know what you're going into. If you just g give this to somebody, odds are they won't read it. It's really difficult to read. It's tw it twists and it turns and you have no idea what's going on at times. It's terrible in a good way. So yeah, I wouldn't recommend it, but I really enjoyed it. If this is interesting to you, um, just, yeah, pick it up. I hear all of his books are equally weird and equally crazy. So um, just pick anything out by him that's a fiction and you're set for a weird and uh, twisting journey. So after Murakami, I read another book I was gifted. Uh, First They Killed My Father by Long Un. This was actually given to me by a university, St. Michael's College. It was a book award, actually, for um, academic achievement and social conscience, so that was nice. And um, I read it, it's a great book. Um, they boast here on the book that there is a Netflix film by Angelina Jolie. I'm sorry, uh, Angelina Jolie, the film doesn't, give it, uh, doesn't do it justice. Read this, it's great. Um, the film is so-so, uh, but this is so much more in depth. I feel, I mean, I don't know a lot about the Cambodian genocide, but I know more than I did before I read this. So it's a really informative book. It's kind of grim, it's a tough book, but it's worth it and it's interesting and I would definitely read it before you watch the Netflix movie and get discouraged. No offense, Angelina Jolie. And the next book I read was Nomad by James Swallow. And I, I don't know, um, I picked this out of a library like three years ago because I bought this book and I loved it, I Am Pilgrim, and it said for fans of I Am Pilgrim, so I was like, huh, I think I'll get this. And it sat on my shelf for three years or uh, around three years. So I finally picked it up. I was like, I have to finish this. And I did, and I read the second one. I don't know how many books there are. I've read the first one and the second one. They're really good. It makes a really good like escape novel where you just want to tune out and just be like, okay, I am gonna read this. I really enjoy this. It's it's a good book. The second one was more predictable, but still a good book. I mean, I finished it, right? So I can't really say it's bad. Um, but yeah, it was good. And I got it half price. So the book after Nomad was a recommendation by my 12 year old brother, Mortal Engines by Philip Reeve. And he was really insistent on me reading this. I think he really liked them. And I read the first book and it was a bit too juvenile, so to speak, for me. I didn't really enjoy it. I finished it, but it, I didn't read the second or third one, especially because I have a very long reading list here of books I wanna read. And uh, yeah, I, I felt like I was kind of quote unquote wasting my time, so to speak. So um, yeah, not, not for me. If, if you're my brother's age, if you're 12, then yeah, I mean, maybe you'll enjoy that book. 
if you're 18 or older, maybe not. But uh, yeah, uh, moving on. The next book I read was by another. It was another gift by the same person that gave me nothing to envy. A great book again. Somebody that knows me. So um, it's what money can't buy. Uh, by Michael J. Sandel and he has another book called Justice which is on my reading list and he's also a teacher at Harvard who uh, teaches this class called uh, Justice uh, so again really interesting it was I think the first book I actually wrote a summary about so you can see it's, it's highlighted here and um, I have a I have a summary that I'm gonna I'm gonna make a video specifically on this book it's not so short. So the next book I read is, um, I don't know if I should call it a book or an essay, but it's A Vindication on the Rights of Women uh, with Strictures on Political and Social and Moral Subjects by Mary Wollstonecraft. And it's a great book or a great essay. Uh, the Ye Old English is hard to understand at times. It's um, because it was written so long ago, but it's a, it's a great interesting book and it really helps you to see or to realize where the beginnings of the feminist movement started. She had she hit a lot of things spot on. It's not really actualized. There's a lot of new things you could read, which I, I, I did, um, but it's a good place to start. So yeah, really informative. So the next book I read was Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie's, I'm sorry if I butchered that, um, Dear Iji Aweli. I'm sorry if I butchered that again, or A Feminist Manifesto in 15 Suggestions. And again, that's a way more actualized book that I really enjoyed. And I'm also working on a video for that uh, by itself. So make sure to like and subscribe. Uh, it'll be worth it. But anyway, um, great book, really concise and to the point, just 15 suggestions and she, she says it literally. And um, yeah, again, I would read that before I read uh, Betty Friedan or Mary Wilsoncraft. It's a great book full of actionable advice that's really like insightful. It made me realize some things that I, I, you don't even think about. And uh, yeah, go read that. I really love her book. I read uh, Purple Hibiscus. I just read Purple Hibiscus, uh, not just, I read two years ago. Great book. Again, kind of grim, kind of like, oh my God, I have to put this down now. But again, great book. And um, yeah, I would, I would read her books and listen to her TED talk. Again, why we should all be feminist. I read that like six years ago as a small book and I've listened to her TED talk a few, a few times. That's all I have to say about that. Look out for my video on Dear Ija Wele. The next book I read was another nonfiction and it's uh, The Most Good You Can Do by Peter Singer. Now, um, Peter Singer is basically the person that's, uh, well, he, the book is basically about effective altruism, which is just to being really logical, reasonable and cold or hard when it comes to your charity and your charitable, charitable actions and contributions. And it's hard, like it's hard to do that and it's hard to think like him. I couldn't fully subscribe to what he's saying. Very interesting book, a really completely different mindset to what I have and to what you usually hear around you. Nobody says, oh, I'm gonna save the most lives you can. It's mostly, oh, I'm gonna give to this small charity or that small charity that's doing something I identify with. He's not about that at all. He's like, well, you have to save the most lives possible, which in theory sounds really logical and it makes sense. But once you, you're thinking about it and the the examples he puts in the book, it's not that easy to, to, to like subscribe to it. But again, I would really recommend kind of eye-opening to the movement of effective altruism. And something that he says that sticks to, sticks or stuck with me is that it has to be sustainable. Altruism and charity have to be sustainable. And it's better than, I mean, that it's not effective than if it's not being done at all. So um yeah, but I am reading another book right now that kind of contradicts that. So stick around till the end where I talk about that book, which is the one I'm reading currently. So next I read this book by Primo Levi, who was an Italian a Jew who was in a concentration camp. And I read this first book, If This Is A Man, in 2018 in school. But I never read this second book, which is The Truce. And they're both in here. Uh, so I, I had this book that I had literally read half of. So I finished The Truce. And again, I really, the first one is about his time in the concentration camp and this one is about his return home and it's really much more hope filled the second one than the first one obviously uh it's filled of ups and lows but it's mostly uh ups or not as low as being in a concentration camp obviously so huge eye opener it really made me um think about what happened in world war ii and uh just 
looking at it through the eyes of a survivor of a concentration camp and about his journey home, which I hadn't read a lot about before. It was really eye-opening and really interesting to really uh, immerse yourself in this book. It's really well read. He was really smart, you can tell. Read it and uh, it's, a, it's a great book, both of them. I did like the first one more though. I felt it more personal than his return home. So the next book I read wasn't really a book, it's more of an essay, but it's called Giving Without Sacrifice, Income, Happiness, and the Low Cost of Charity by Andreas Mogensen. And a, a singer's book led me to it um, because it's, it's, it's a good book and this essay is more in line with what I can uh, think or what I can subscribe to personally. It's just about how there is no downside to giving to charity, like in any way, um, not even me having less money, so to speak, is a downside when you really look at the science. So it's 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 a, it's an essay slash like article, again eye opening and a, a really good compliment to Peter Singer's uh, "The Most Good You Can Do." So again, read it. So the next book I read was "The Feminine Mystique" by Betty Friedan. So again, a feminist book, and again, an outdated because it, it was written a long long ago. Eye opening and really insightful. And by long ago, I mean like the 1950s, 1960s uh, is when when Betty Friedan is talking about. Uh, so again, really insightful, really eye opening. It wasn't that long ago, even though feminism has come a long way, even though it still has a long way to go. But really eye-opening, um, it's important to know the history and the origin of these types of movements that still have ways to go and uh, things to achieve. And it's important to remember where they came from and what they wanted and what they've accomplished. Uh, so again, a really good book. I would definitely read it. I didn't even buy it, it's like a PDF somewhere. So um, uh, if I can find that again, I'll link it in the description so you can give it a read or just kind of skim through it. Again, really recommend. So the next book I'm reading, um, or the next book I read, I'm still currently reading. I'm a bit slower because I'm taking notes. It, this is the book I was talking about that kind of contradicts uh, Peter Singer when it comes to effective charities. And it's uh, Winners Take All, The Elite Charade of Saving the World by Anand Giridharadas. I'm sorry if I completely messed that up. Um, so I've been following him on Twitter and he's, been, he's really prolific there, so you should go follow him and me. Um, but again, a really good insight into why charity isn't the cure to, to our problems as a society and why it's actually, it might even be a detractor to uh, the solutions. And I mean, Peter Singer's book is all about why charity is so good. And this book is all about why charity is so bad. So again, a really clashing of ideas. I would love to see them talk. Um, but yeah, again, a great book. I hadn't finished it. I'm really anxious to finish this book and just to know more about what Anand has to say. Great book. So the next books, and I think the last one I'm gonna, what last series I'm gonna read for this year is the Dune trilogy. I mean, there's six of them, but right now it's just a trilogy. And um, I actually started reading this because it's a soon to be motion picture and I saw the, uh, the trailer on YouTube. And it looks the trailer looks really good. The book's 10 times better. The first one is 10 times better. The second one, uh, I had a bit of beef with it and I actually tweeted about it, so go follow me. But uh, it, eh, it struggles a bit. And this third one is just, it's good. Not as good as the first one, better than the second one. And it's weird. They're all weird. It's, they're, they're all weird and good and there's a bit of everything in them. I'm really enjoying them. I am gonna read the fourth one. Um, I'm actually, this is where I'm at with the, here, oh, here. So I'm this close to finishing it. I'm gonna finish it before the year and I'm gonna uh, read the fourth one. Um, I can't add it right now because I haven't started it, but uh, yeah, great books. Eh. Great books, would recommend them before you watch the movie, even though it is coming out next, next year. So you have time and um, yeah. So these were all the books I read, and uh, now let's move on to the two audiobooks I, I listened to. Now, I listen to these on Spotify, and the first one, and I hope I don't get too many comments on, on why I'm wrong about this, because from people I know, this is a really popular book. Um, it's Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki and Sharon Lechter, or Le Lechter, Lechter, I think, I'm guessing, sorry. And I went into this book uh, 
not thinking I would like it, and lo and behold, I was right. I didn't like it at all, not one bit. I, I understand his message about being financially literate, but that being a cure to all your problems and to making you rich is not something I can get behind. I did not enjoy this book at all. Um, yeah, I, I had to read it because a lot of people had said, oh, it's a, the best book, it'll change your life. My life's not changed, I'm sorry. Uh, it, it's just not for me. I did not like it one anything. But I guess to each their own, and um, if anybody disagrees, please respectfully comment. Respectfully comment down below on why or what I'm missing, and maybe I'll give it a try again. And the last, or the second audiobook I listened to was War and Peace by Lao Tzu. And a lot of people had also recommended this, I mean, especially my dad, he was like, you should read this. And I thought, sure, why not? Um, I thought it was gonna, it, it's strategy, and I thought it was gonna be more, less literal. It is literally about war and peace. Like, he goes through, like, ways to conceal yourself, like, physically, like, where to stage your army. I, I, I'm sure it was a revolutionary book when it came out, because it's like the strategies to war. But since I'm 18 in Mexico, and I'm not in war, or, a, like, a commander, or a colonel or something, I just found it really weird that people still read it and get insights from it. Again, maybe I'm missing something, but it's again, I wouldn't recommend it. I just found it really absurd and because it's it's not actionable. It's it's completely it's it's like about war 100% and it wasn't what I was expecting. Maybe that's just my fault. Uh, but yeah. Those were the books I read for 2020. Also comment below if me not liking war and peace is bad or just comment if you disagree. Hey guys, so um, a little addendum to the video I filmed a few days ago. I finished this book, Children of Dune, and I started this book, which is God Emperor of Dune, and it's uh, it's it's good. I mean, I feel like they're getting weaker each um, each book is getting a bit weaker than the one before it, but overall it's good and um, yeah, enjoyable. Uh, I kind of want to be done with the series though. I have, um, I mean, this one and then two other books to go. It's six in total. I've read three currently reading the fourth and I really want to be finished with them. I might not finish the series, but um, yeah, I guess I'll see in 2021. So that's that's it for 2020. The, that's the 37 books I read. It might be 38 by the by the time you see this video because I might have started the fourth one of the, these. Definitely, actually. But uh, yeah, that's, that's it. Um, some books I would recommend. Some books I definitely wouldn't. Comment down below on why I'm right, what, why I'm uh, wrong. Maybe you suggest me some books that you enjoy, and uh, yeah, I'll, uh, I hope to do the same or even more reading next year. That it's gonna be almost the entire year is gonna be my gap year. So um, yeah, that's that's it for this year, and uh, I'll see you guys next year. Like, comment, and subscribe, and enjoy the holidays.